today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw down this system, and I'm gonna show you basically what I did on the Porsche to, to set it up for intake of Freon, and then we'll get into it from there. So stay tuned. <laughs> Many of you know, I've got a couple of older 80s cars um, that I do a lot of maintenance on to keep up to speed. Um, both systems in each vehicle are not working at the moment. They're both uh, dry. However, they're fully intact systems. So with both systems, both vehicles, um, both are R12 systems. They uh, have not been converted over to R134A. Uh, I'm a bit of a purist, as many of you know as well too, so I like to kind of keep the originality of the vehicles in, intact. There's a lot of debate about the use of 134A and the actual cooling capabilities with, um, with those compared to uh, using R12, where R12 is really pretty much designed to cool. It does a, a lot better job cooling than a 134A uh, system. So really the refrigerant for these systems kind of goes to the design of the systems. And so there's an abundance of R12 Freon that's still available. Uh, you can buy it. Um, the pros and cons of that, of course, is that it's much more expensive. So, but you can still get it. And uh, I was able to procure at least, you know, a good supply of it off eBay. Um, so hold on to yourself. It's literally about 34 bucks a can. So the refrigerant just for two vehicles sets you back at least, you know, 300 bucks. Um, but, you know, if you're trying to look for, um, you know, that level of originality, then, uh, you know, that's important. Um, so all those things relative, you've got to have the right tools to do this stuff as well. And I've been doing a lot of researching and reading and understanding exactly, you know, where on, um, on the internet um things are different systems i've been reading the manuals especially for the porsche and especially for the camaro trying to understand capacities trying to make sure that i've got the right equipment um so a couple of things i've purchased has been a uh, manifold gauge set and i'll show you that in a minute along with a vacuum pump to draw down the system and on the Camaro specifically, I needed an actual set of uh, specific adapters or an, an adapter to connect up the high side of the uh, R12 system. And so let's kind of step into what the systems are in detail a little bit, and I'll kind of walk through some of the details of that. So if you look at the, um, the GM system, which is a very popular system that's been around for, you know, for many years, um, they've got a normally pretty large receiver dryer and uh, lines that go to and from the compressor and the um, uh, the condenser in the front. This is the adapter that I needed to get to connect with a, a smaller diameter uh, Schrader valve for the high side. That's just purely for measurement purposes. So I just I got that and I'll I'll be able to to do some work on on. Uh, drawing this down. Both these systems are empty just by pushing the Schrader valve. If you if you have anything come out of it, just any kind of uh, notion of Freon or error or anything that you you can basically tell if the system's full or not. I've already done that and the system's empty. Um, somebody on one of the boards did tell me that this compressor looks like it's been replaced. I also looked a little closer here and it, there's a piece of a scrap of heater hose that somebody put in at some point in time. To, I don't know, maybe a dress um, issue of a of a hose rubbing against a, um, you know, a, specifically the the bracket is what it looks like it was trying to prevent. Maybe there was an issue with the bracket deteriorating the hose or something. It looks like some good engineering <laughs> at least to stop that from happening. Um, so what, what you start to think of is, is you're, if you're going to start filling up these systems, what's going to prevent a leakage in the systems and what can go bad is typically either a bad hose 
Um, and then the connections that are made off of those hoses within the, 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 the air conditioning system in general, each one of the connections in the system has an O-ring um, to basically make the, the connection seal. And of course, everybody knows with rubber uh, and, and the deterioration of that over time is that basically they, they, can, they constrict and they, and they basically stop the sealing. So how does Freon get out of the system? Normally it leaks out through the O-ring connectors and at the, the connection points and that the seal that's broken. So it's, it's good practice to replace all the O-rings to put a new receiver dryer in. If the hoses are old or tired, they've got the potential of actually leaking out because they're a pure rubber hose. And a lot of the times the refrigerant and the, and the, and the Freon can actually leak directly through the hose. I saw a lot of um, discussion on that when I was reading on the Porsche boards about how, you know, basically uh, the Freon is, is its weak point is to leak through the, the hoses. Modern day hoses are now lined, so they're actually a plastic hose with like a polyethylene, and then the rubber is just basically a protective layer over that. So these older hoses are pure rubber, and that basically can cause some leakage of Freon as well too. So that's the GM system. You get into, of course, the Porsche. It's a completely different vehicle, as everybody knows that they're a rear engine vehicle. The condenser of the, of the air conditioning system's in the front, underneath the front bumper of the car. And it basically has some hoses that come from that all the way to the back. So the weak point of this system is that specifically you've got long hoses going all the way to the front, all the way to the back to the compressor. And of course, that, that increases your ability that those are going to have a potential leak, right? So one of the things that I did do is I, I, uh, I did connect up um, the manifold set that I bought. And I connected it to the high side and the low side after figuring out exactly where those were online. And then I also bought a pump to do a drawdown, a vacuum, to see if the system actually um, you know, held vacuum. And so I did that, ran it for about a half an hour, let it sit, and then uh, I, I basically had let it sit now for about a day after closing both the valves off with vacuum underneath the system. And I was able to draw it down to about 22-ish, 24-ish, and it hasn't budged since. So that's good. That tells me that there's no leaks in the system and we're not escaping um, any Freon or, or, or losing anything potentially if I, was, if I was to charge the system up. So, so that's, that's positive. That means that there's no major leaks. It holds vacuum. And um, yeah, it's, it's basically you know, a, a good contained system. The other thing that's interesting to note on, on the Porsche system is they basically give a lot of information right on the back of the car. It tells you the exact capacity of Freon that it holds. It'll hold 39 ounces of Freon. So that's what it takes to charge uh, the system. Uh, receiver dryer on this, if you come up to the front of the car, is actually underneath the front part of the wheel well. And you can see it here as a long cylinder. And it's got like this plastic cap on it as well too. And this cap looks like there's quite a bit of corrosion underneath it. But in this is actually a sight glass that allows you to tell, you know, what the if the you know the freons there, if there's bubbles or if there's air in the system, things to that nature. A couple of clamps to hold it down. So I suppose if you wanted to actually see the sight glass with the system running, obviously you'd have either take the fender off or or pull the, the receiver drawer out enough to, to, to see it while it's running unclamped and then clamp it back in. This, you know, like I said, looks pretty corroded and looks like it's been sitting there. So that's there and then you can see, here's the hoses, they've got some undercoating on them and uh, they go all the way to the front underneath the, um, to, the con to the front condenser. And you can see, you know, some of the hoses have got pretty good, um, you know, uh, markings on them, and, and that's underneath the wheel well, right? And so that doesn't look too bad. So that I'm debating if that one hose is original or not. But each one of these hoses, again, going all the way back to underneath the vehicle and to the back of the car. Okay, so I've got everything connected to the Camaro now. You can see I've got the, the red high pressure line connected to that adapter. The blue to the receiver dryer, manifolds there, pump set up. Things are at zero here, so really it's about opening both of these. 
all the way up to ensure that we can create a vacuum in the system and actually do a drawdown. So it's as simple as basically making sure that you got these, make sure you got them just finger tight. I read this many times as well too. Don't have these things cranked down with a, a pliers or anything. It's just, all you're trying to do is make sure that the rubber will seal, right? So there we go, zero. There's a little switch right on the side of the pump. So you just click it on. It's not too noisy, it's pretty quiet. And as you can see, right off the bat, um, it's already starting to draw down. The needle's moving. It's going past 20, and it's continuing to pull more vacuum. So, I think on the Camaro I read, it's ideal to try to get it down to like 30. Um, so what I'm gonna do is basically let this run now for about a half an hour, and uh, just see if it'll draw down as much as it possibly can. You can see it's getting even further. It's like 25. So we'll let it sit for half an hour. I'll put a timer on my iPhone. Okay guys, uh, we're just about at half an hour here on the timer. The uh, pump's been running and looking at the number here, we're just about at 29.30ish, which is exactly what um, everything uh, the manual and internet has been telling me where it needs to be. So, Leaving the pump running, we're just going to start to close off each one of the valves and trap that vacuum in the system. And um, ensure that we don't allow any air to enter in. Okay, those are nice and tight. So we'll just switch off the pump. Here we go. Okay, so we'll let this sit. Um, and basically let it sit overnight and check to make sure that that number doesn't move. So that'll be it for today's video. This is part one of probably many parts as we get into charging the air conditioning systems of both the Camaro and the Porsche. Uh, again, if you've got any comments, feel free to drop them down below in the uh, comments section. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned for the next videos and uh, look forward to getting cool together with you guys. Peace.